an invisible bond that connects us. The 15th meridian east, from minus 50 to plus 50 degrees Celsius, it unites all the climate zones of the Earth. People and places that could not be more different, connected by a common daily rhythm. After all, the time of day on the 15th meridian is always the same from Svalbard to Namibia. A day on the 15th meridian, different worlds at exactly the same time. A day on the 15th meridian east. What would the world be without science? What ideas are people on the 15th meridian developing in order to make our world a better place? This episode will take us into the most diverse ecosystems on the 15th meridian. From the barren Nebib desert to the glacial world of Svalbard and the depth of the Mediterranean Sea. This diversity is suffering from drastic changes in the climate the inhabitants along the 15th meridian are exploring various ways of shaping the future and hope to leave behind a home worth living in for the generations of tomorrow. Building the world of tomorrow. Daybreak on the 15th meridian east. Here, four researchers are working on processes intended to free the oceans from CO2, make clothes out of waste, and extract water from the desert. Um, this is very important to know what we are doing with climate change and to be able to do this so that we can prepare for what the future is. I had probably become a scientist because I'm quite curious and because I want to understand what is going on in different parts of the world. Sama ta činjenica govori u prilog tome da svi moramo osjećati odgovornost. Imat mogućnost razumijevanja je odgovornost. Spero che ognuno di noi faccia qualcosa anche nel, nel quotidiano, nel, nelle piccole azioni di ogni giorno, non per forza nel, nell'inventare un tessuto. Seven o'clock in the morning in Sicily. The designer, Adriana Santonocito, wants to take problems into her own hands. Her idea is to turn orange peels into fabric. Thanks to the volcanic soil, oranges thrive particularly well around Etna. L'arancia rappresenta per me il simbolo della Sicilia e dell'Italia. So rappresenta il sole, rappresenta l'arancione stesso, è un colore che rappresenta l'allegria, il benessere. La Sicilia è un po' questo, è, è l'arancia per me è veramente il simbolo della mia terra. Adriana comes from Catania, the second largest city in Sicily. Many oranges are processed and many shells are thrown away here. 700,000 tons each year. That forms the basis for Adriana's invention. L'idea di un tessuto da agrumi è nata nel 2011, mentre stavo ultimando i miei studi in fashion design a Milano. E ho deciso di dedicare la mia tesi finale eh, a tessuti sostenibili nuovi e alla nascita proprio di una nuova fibra tessile dagli agrumi. 
lì avevo un desiderio e un sogno, quello di eh, creare qual- un prodotto che potesse rivoluzionare l'industria tessile in chiave sostenibile e che portasse valore per la mia terra. La mia terra è la Sicilia. Certo, si chiama fine produzione eh, perché il tarocco è un'arancia che matura eh, da fine dicembre ai primi di marzo. Eh, ha un periodo breve eh, ed è però un... Millions of citrus trees grow in Sicily. The four most popular varieties are Tarocco, Moro, Navellina and Sanguinello. Thus far, they have not suffered from the infamous citrus greening disease, which has destroyed entire plantations in India and Florida. Adriana's company, Orange Fiber, produces an innovative threat from the remains. Quindi recuperare questo sottoprodotto e trasformarlo in una cellulosa che può essere adatta alla filatura e poi può essere trasformata in un tessuto sostenibile simile alla seta era il sogno che volevo realizzare e che alla fine con, uh, con Orange Fiber abbiamo realizzato. The we, Adriana means, is herself and her friend from university, Enrica Arena. In 2014, they founded their joint startup. At the same time, in the oldest desert in the world, the Namib Desert, South African Monia Gerber works here in Namibia. She wants to discover ways to obtain water in this boiling hot environment. So the woestijnen is ongelooflijk. Uh, jij rijdt in en het lijkt als het plan niks is niet. Als het het doet is en je verstaat niet hoe je energie ziet kan worden leven niet. Maar hoe nader je kijkt, hoe meer besef je dat al leven wordt als het is. Zodat het dus in een plek wat leeg lijkt is er zoveel activiteit. En dat is net ongelooflijk, want dat is dieren en planten wat in een van die droogste... Mania came to Namibia to the Gobabib Training and Research Center in 2016. Her research focuses on a leafless thorn studded shrub that can only be found in the Namib Desert, the Nara plant. Mania uses sensors to measure the humidity in the air. She wants to find out when and how fog occurs and how the plant reacts to this humidity. En dat is een baie unieke plant. De, die vorm van die stam veroorzaakt dat er zand opbouw onder die plant. So die zand vorm oor tijd sy eie sandduin. En um, hier die sandduin het dalke funksie. Ons is nog nie seker hoe hier die sandduin die omgeving beinvloed nie. So die duin mag, mag ook een hele ander micro omgeving skep wat beter temperatuur is en kan ook skade weer verskaf in die plant. The Nara plant minimizes water loss as it has no leaves. Instead, it carries out photosynthesis directly in its green stems and thorns. It is a clever way to absorb moisture from the mist of the sandy desert. Between the dunes, Manya is tracking this phenomenon. Jij is niet omringd door die negatieve nis van die buitenwereld. Dus so, jij kan op je eigen wees en jij kan je eigen mens wees, want jij moet je eigen gedachten vormen en je eigen opinies beginnen vormen. Um, so, dat is een baie goede plek om te groeien als mens. Dat is een wonderlijke omgeving. Once a week, Mania comes to collect the most recent data and to let her mind run wild in the silence of nature. Over 10,000 kilometers further north. Eight o'clock in the morning in Swabord, researcher Hanne Christensen is on her way to examine the permafrost with a doctoral student. Permafrost is soil that remains permanently frozen year-round. These soils provide precise information about temperature fluctuations in recent decades. They are therefore ideally suited for research on climate change. 
course, one of the things that scientists are really interested in at the moment is what could come out of the permafrost. So if the permafrost starts to thaw, this releases potentially gases that is in the permafrost, such as CO2 and methane, that can go out and go into the atmosphere. And this can affect the composition of the atmosphere. 14% of the carbon stored in soils worldwide is locked inside permafrost, 450 gigatons. The release of these gases would exacerbate global warming to an extreme degree. We need to know how the seasonal changes are. And when we know that, then it's much easier for us to understand how it can undergo long-term changes. So actually understand if this landform will start to degrade, we could start to see mounds building and thermocast forming, which means that the ice in the ice wedges would start to degrade. And if that happens, that's a big change to the landscape. Oh, looks good. It's so cold now. The ground would also become unstable. Buildings on the melting permafrost would start to wobble. Even today, damages are being caused worldwide by permafrost soils giving away. And today is the 16th of May. I may have to have glasses. Hanna and her student have drilled a hole in the frost, which is about 10 meters deep. Yeah, so here have we been out and gathered some data from this borehole, which goes 10 meters down in the permafrost. And we can see on the screen here that the temperature today, just a day for a team since at cirka minus 4,5 grader i bunden af det her borehul, altså i 10 meters dybde. Og når vi så går op til overfladen, så har vi minus 1,5 under den her pakke af is ved overfladen af terrænet. Og det er jo ganske varmt for permafrost, når vi så langt mod nord. Og på den bakke igen. The warming soil is also due to the fact that Swarbord, with its large coal reserves, has always attracted many people. The pressure that houses and streets alone exert on the ground causes the permafrost to thaw. Hanne coordinates the Permafrost Observatory project in Norway, a long-term project aimed at providing information on how rapidly rising air temperatures can also lead to a warming of the soil. The researchers want to detect creeping changes in the frozen soil early on so that they can be better taken into account when creating climate models. Nine a.m. off the coast of Croatia. The marine researcher Stasa Puskaric travels out to the Adriatic Sea. His research focuses on CO2, that is stored there. Year-round, in many regions of the oceans, organic materials trickle down from the surface of the water into the depth of the sea, creating a phenomenon which has thus come to be referred to as marine snow. Od početka industrijske revolucije iznad kapaciteta zemljenog ciklusa ugljika koji je 3,5 milijarde tona godišnje, ostaje u atmosferi. Mi danas imamo više od 500 milijardi tona ugljika u atmosferi koji ne bi trebao biti tamo. A dobro, tu ima, znate što, to je jedino mjesto gdje ostalo još te industrije, jer vamo dole imate... The carbon from our atmosphere gets absorbed by the sea in large quantities. The remains of marine plants and animals, the marine snow, store it before sinking to the seabed. It could be stored there for up to a thousand years, an effective remedy against the greenhouse effect. za morski snijeg. Najvjerovatnije mnogi nisu ni čuli taj termin, ali on je prisutan u svim svjetskim morima i oceanima. I vezan je uz sve procese koji su za nas bitni za globalno zagrijavanje, zato jer to je najvažniji put kojim ugljični dioksid iz atmosfere ide na dno mora. Stasa wants to artificially reinforce this effect by stimulating algae production. 
but this is very controversial and could severely disturb the balance of the oceans. Over 7,000 kilometers further south, Manya is on her way back to the research station in the middle of the Namib desert. Al van het een kleine small stalwer om beten in die natuur te wees en om om planten te wees en om dieren te wees. En een groot ding het een van die vrouwen van mij gevraagd: "Is hoe kom gaan doen je die microbiologie en plantkunde nie?" Um, dus het baie interessant terugdenk en zij denkt dat zal pas bij mij. So, Wat toe gebeur het is, ek het net my mind op gesit en besluit ek gaan nou plantkunde gaan swat. So ingewikkeld en meer complex as wat mense dink. En dit is net wonderlik om te sien hoe alles groei en hoe daar lewe oor ons daar is. The microbiologist uses the laboratory to investigate how the unique Nara plant can survive under such barren conditions. Where does it get its water from and can that system also be used for other life forms? Mania wants to know how the plant conducts moisture into its interior. She simulates the fog in the desert. The fog of the Namib forms on the Atlantic coast when the cold Benguela current meets the warm, moist air masses. The fog reaches into the interior of the country by riding on the desert winds. The my project is op die Nara plant en om te kyk of dit mis as 'n bron van water gebruik. Uh, mis is een baie belangrike bron van water in die omgeving en is meer reliable as reen. Simultaneously in the underwater world of the Adriatic, Stasa hopes to discover a way to stop global warming here. Najgori mogući scenarij se već dešava. To svi vidimo, klima se mijenja. Problem promjena danas je brzina promjena. Mi ne smijemo dozvoliti te brzine promjena zato jer mnoge vrste se jednostavno ne mogu nikako prilagoditi tim promjenama. Stasa often dives without oxygen. Free diving is his way of entering this world to explore the marine snow. Normally, dead organic matter and living marine creatures exist in a food cycle. Only unusable matter sinks, taking carbon with it. An overproduction of algae would cause more unusable sediment to sink and with it take more CO2 to the sea floor. This process is known as a biological pump and explains why Stasa wants to disturb the ecological balance and put fertilizer into the sea. With fertilizer, one could remove more CO2 from the atmosphere. The tiny plants would clump together, sink en masse, and form a giant carpet on the bottom of the sea. We can to jedno malo klupko vate. Dakle, nije klupko, nego čestica vate, ono kad je uzmemo, kad doćemo čistiti lice ili nešto. Evo, upravo tako izgleda struktura i mi zovemo tu strukturu organski matriks. Dakle, ima dovoljno vode i mogućnost da ti mikroorganizmi uđu i oni se usidre. Isto kao barka kad baci sidro, tako isto bakterija baci ove svoje svoja sidra i ne miče se iz tog zato jer je to mikrobiološki raj. The result of the dive, a few flakes of marine snow. Vidite da i ove čestice, one jako brzo se slegnu na dno ove čaše. I to je bitno zato jer nam ukazuje da i na drugim 
mjestima u svijetu, ako i potaknuli proizvodnju, ako je možemo tako nazvati, tih čestica, mogli bi puno više ugljika maknuti iz atmosfere nego što je to sad. A radi se zapravo o tome da priroda ne može pratiti u korak našim emisijama. That fact causes Stasa to rack his brain. The preservation of our world is a matter close to his heart. A little further south in Sicily, the production of orange thread is entering a new phase. Adriana Santonocito's laboratory is being renovated, so she has to continue her work in the hall. Oggi eh, la maggior parte dei tessuti che indossiamo eh, provengono dal petrolio o dal cotone. Sono entrambe delle materie eh, prime che hanno, presentano diversi eh, impatti sia a livello ambientale e sia a livello di eh, prezzo. Ad esempio se noi pensiamo al cotone e eh, molti dei, tessu, del, um, dei campi dedicati alla produzione di cotone per il tessile eh, sono ormai eh, finiti. She spent eight months experimenting with how to extract cellulose from the shells. Today, Orange Fiber is part of the Fashion Tech Lab portfolios, a company that invests in innovative fashion. Immaginatevi un'arancia. Prendete nel succo quello che resta è la buccia. Noi recuperiamo questa buccia che in gergo viene chiamato pastazzo. Da lì estraiamo una cellulosa. Questa cellulosa è una cellulosa che può essere filata. Quindi da là, eh, che questo, questa fase viene fatta da noi in Sicilia accanto ad uno spremitore di agrumi, quindi in linea con i loro impianti. Adriana and her fellow student Enrica are currently working on textiles that could have a cosmetic effect on the skin thanks to the essential oils contained within their fibers. Researchers at the 15th Meridian believe that science can make the world a better place. For that reason, some of them travel to remote regions as here, to the Eunice in Swabord, to the lectures being given by permafrost expert Hanne Christensen. Uh, so I think that the most important thing for the students that choose to come up to Svalbard is that they understand what a privilege it is to be here and what you can actually do here that you can maybe not do where they come from. And this reviews both the processes, but it also in, in how do you actually study these you things? You can see how students learn much easier here than in many other settings. They get very much into what's going on in what they're doing. About 2,600 people live on the scientific outpost, only 1,000 kilometers away from the North Pole. After coal mining ended here in the 1960s, researchers from all over the world moved to this special settlement. We're learning some things from living here in the Arctic about how the landscape is active, and this is some of the things that I find very nice about being here, being in the object that you study. So you're kind of living surrounded by what you want to know about. You don't need to bring yourself somewhere, try to find out about it. You can just basically look out the window or you open your door, go out, and you're also part of a society that undergoes these uh, or experiences these many different things. Twelve thirty p.m. lunchtime. Even if there are thousands of kilometers between the scientists, thanks to the clocks all being set to the same time on the fifteenth meridian, their stomachs begin to growl simultaneously.
Namibia, back in the more than one million year old Namib desert. Um, so the Namib woestijn is very important, especially for navorsing of climate change. So the woestijn is very dry, very um, in water, and very organisms have water for uh, the decomposition of ontbinding van organische materiaal. En as ons kan verstaan hoe die hele koolstofcyclus met plante werk in hierdie droge omgeving, kan ons dit toepas op een natte omgeving. Far away from civilization, the Gobabib Training and Research Center in the Namib Desert has been conducting fog research since 1962. The Nara plant, the subject of Mania's research, is not only a water-rich food source for desert animals, but also for humans. The Topnar, a Namibian desert tribe, harvest the melons of the Nara regularly. They eat the flesh and sell the seeds. So uh, the um, Topnar is currently inspired by the earth. They have still traditions. So they are very grateful for what they have to do with other people, all they have to do with other the Topna community lives in the western part of the Namib Desert. The Nar plant is central to the welfare and culture of the Topnar and is the main ingredient in their food. It is not much bigger than an orange and bears thorny fruits once a year. All parts of the plant are used. The flesh is eaten, fresh and dried. The Nara plant grows exclusively on dunes. The Topna use its roots to produce medicine. The sun-dried seeds are as nutritious as peanuts. Um, hulle is ook een gemeenskap wat in die middel van die woestijn bly. Dit is een baie rove en kan, dit is een harde omgeving om in te bly. En hulle doen dit so goed. Hulle is net heel te maal deel van die omgeving. En ek denk dit is hoe ons ook moet wees. Ons moet deel word van die omgeving. Um, mekaar embrace en tradities ook embrace. Traditions in the Namib Desert, a refuge in Croatia. Stasa's favorite place to be is his craft garage. He makes pipes there while pondering the world and the responsibility of each individual in it. Yes, I feel like I'm going to be honest. In this moment, we have to say and we have to say that our brain dobili od Boga i ovaj gen koji je omogućio rast i da imamo te sposobnosti kao danas. Što to znači? Dakle, ako ja razumijem što se oko mene zbiva, ako ja razumijem da sve oko mene ide u negativnom smjeru, moja je dužnost, obaveza da ako ja posjedujem određene e, sposobnosti i znanje, da to znanje prenesem, komuniciram i pokušam doprinijeti tome da se ti problemi riješe. Tako ja shvaćam odgovornost. So we draw what kind of shape of the hole we want for the pipe. Stasa often encounters resistance among his scientific colleagues. Not everyone shares his radical ideas, his fear of climate change. Ovdje se osjećam uh, slobodan. Ovdje niko na mene ne može imati utjecaja i ovdje puštam moj mozak da ide u bilo kojem smjeru on to želi. I iz tog razloga se i zaključavam iznutra. Uh, ovdje se osjećam spokojan. Uh, izbilja mogu reći da 
je ovo moj sanctum sanctorum. Ovo, ovo mjesto za mene predstavlja moj svijet. Ovo sam ja. Standing up for new ideas and solutions. Standing up against old thought patterns is a big challenge. Sometimes, the courage to demand change arises out of one's own biography. Okay, so one of the most times in my life was when I was younger. And my, um, we didn't have a lot of big words. And my mom and dad had been standing on the stage. When they were standing, they had to be forced to be on another place. And that didn't go very well with us. My mom had always done everything to make sure that we always had to be able to do it. But it wasn't always so easy. Um, so, yeah, but that did better work. And good, blame not always slack. And um, my mom was not a example of who men should be and that you never have to give up. Meanwhile, it's 3 p.m. on the 15th meridian. In Catania, Sicily, Adriana uses her idea to help both the environment and the orange farmers in her country. When I hear the word Sicilia, I see the eyes of my eyes. No, but for me, for me, it's important to say Sicilia because it's banal to say that it's my original country, but I'm very, very connected to this country. It gives me strength, it gives me strength because, despite the fact that there are many problems here in Sicilia, but to feel the smell of the sea, eh, o uh, vivere eh, la mia famiglia, i miei amici. Per me la Sicilia è casa. There's still a lot of hubbub on Piazza Carlo Alberto in the late afternoon. Adriana examines the newly arrived fabrics. It is still a great pleasure for her to hold her sustainable fabric in her hands. Nel momento in cui ho visto eh, per la prima volta il filato e il tessuto, scoppiavo di felicità. The luxury label Ferragamo has created a small collection from this innovative fabric. Quindi è, è diciamo che è il um, è rivoluzionario perché è, Non essendoci mai stato un tessuto dagli agrumi, eh, sicuramente un tessuto sostenibile, un tessuto biodegradabile, un tessuto simile alla seta, eh, la maggior parte delle persone che lo immaginano, eh, lo immaginano invece, eh, pensando alla buccia degli agrumi, lo, imm lo immaginano invece greggio, eh, quando lo toccano sentono che invece ha questa, questa mano serica e non se l'aspettano. Designer Mario Trimarchi created this piece. Per me è un'emozione grandissima indossare il primo capo realizzato con il tessuto Orange Fiber. Questa è una collezione che ha realizzato un brand di moda italiano che è Salvatore Ferragamo. E come vedete il tessuto lo rappresenta al meglio, cioè è veramente è morbido, è, è una bellissima sensazione anche al contatto con la pelle. Along with beauty, Adriana sees another meaning in her invention. L'importanza di eh, trovare delle fonti alternative di cellulosa per uso tessile è di primaria importanza anche per la salvaguardia del pianeta.
4.15 p.m. on Swarboard. Permafrost researcher Hannah Christensen prepares for her next trip onto the ice. Det er ganske anderledes at bo på Svalbard end mange andre steder, og det er jo mest fordi, at vi har en helt anden årsrytme. Man har tre måneder med vintermørke, og så har man en ganske lang sommer, hvor, man, hvor det slet ikke bliver mørkt. Så lyset påvirker en på en anden måde, og man går faktisk i, i hibernation-modus om vinteren, det vil sige, at man øh, sover. Man sover meget længere, man skal sove måske en til to timer længere om vinteren, og så så kan man være mere frisk om sommeren. Det er jo meget anderledes. Det påvirker en psykisk på en anden måde, end hvis man boede i syden. On Swarboard, there is a complex set of rules for the protection of human beings. Outside of the settlement area, it is mandatory that you carry a rifle with you in case you encounter a polar bear. Skal den ligge inde i selve papiret her, mens man er ude, eller skal han have den med? Hanne drives out to a permafrost borehole with her doctoral student Sarah. 40% of Swarboard is covered with permafrost. This kind of frozen soil is now monitored worldwide because its increasingly rapid decline is worrying for climate researchers all over the world. Sensors measure the temperature around the clock. The measurements are part of a global monitoring network, GTNP. Okay, but no, it's okay. So I'm, my science brain is always on when I'm outdoors. Um, you can also be, of course, just a human when you're outside. But actually, with my profession, it's pretty difficult to go outside and pretend that you're not a scientist, because you are actually a scientist from the bottom of your soul. Ik denk navorsing wordt niet rarig waardeer nie. En ik denk die probleem is dat navorsing nie beskikbaar is vir enig iemand of vir enig iemand in die publiek nie. Dis baie keer terme wat meeste mense nie verstaan nie. En ik denk dit is die probleem. Wetenskap moet eindelijk eenvoudig wees, so dat allemaal kan verstaan wat aangaan en wat ze werk hier doen. Want um, weet, soos die renaforsing wat ons doen, is nie net bedoel vir ander wetenskapelikes nie. Dit is bedoel vir die wereld om te sien. Um, so dat hulle ook beter kan verstaan hoe die omgeving werk. En dalk een liefde vir die natuur ook um, en die woestijn kry. In addition to the narrow plant, insects also provide information about adaptation to the arid environment and climatic changes. For example, these small desert inhabitants. So that is bakkies wat uitgesit is in die gravel plains, riverbed en ook in die name op sandsie. So ek het volgend uitgegaan om die pitvolbakke te kyk en om te kyk of daar enige insekte in is. Um, hier is een project wat al aan is vir 40 jaar en dit monitor die spesieverspreiding en as ook die aantal en type insekte wat jy in die area kry. Long-term measurements are carried out using meteorological ground stations at various locations. Balloons and drones carry sensors into the air, which then measure temperature, humidity and wind force. Although translated, Namib means the place where nothing is, around 200 species of black beetles and many other insects and reptiles live exclusively there. Um, die resultaten kan vergelijkt worden met klimaatsverandering, um, omdat klimaatsverandering een baie groot impact gaan hee op die insectspecies in die area, die aantal en die verspreiding. Mi gubimo u prosjeku 65 vrsta dnevn. Ta pozadinsko uh, izumiranje je 
tisuću puta veće nego što bi trebalo biti. A jako dobro znamo, danas razumijemo te stvari. Stabilnost sustava ovisi o broju vrsta. Each of the scientists is working alone on the 15th meridian east, and yet they are all united by the same vision. Mi moramo gledati danas našu planetu, ne lokalno ili Hrvatsku ili Njemačku ili Ameriku ili bilo koju drugu zemlju kao nekakve lokalne. Mi moramo gledati planetu kao jedan cjelokupni sustav i što se dešava sa tom stabilnosti. Back in Stasa's workshop with his pipes. He's actually a professor of environmental technology at the Rochester Institute of Technology in Dubrovnik. But he prefers to work alone on ideas that would simplify the world a bit. Ja vidim da nema dovoljno vremena. Ali siste u, u, u isto vrijeme ja smatram da e, mi nemamo luksuz biti pesimist niti letargični u, u, u istom. Quarter past six on Swalboard. Hannah and Sarah are about to complete their measurements. Det her er et af de steder, jeg har jobbet længst med forskning på Svalbard. Og øh, det betyder jo derfor vældig meget for mig. Jeg kommer her jo ganske ofte og ser, hvad der foregår. Jeg har året rundt og ser på, hvad der sker på forskellige tidspunkter året. Studerer permafrosten og ser på, hvad der egentlig sker her. In order to continue her study of permafrost, Hanna has to return to the university with her new data to compare the results with the permafrost samples she has already stored. Yeah, so, um, so no, now we have to find out where we really have the samples we want to study today, right? So They retrieve the samples from the freezer where they are stored and are waiting to be used. And then I think we will just put it over here so we can better see what's I switch sides and this is home sides. How many meters do you think we have down here? Ten meters. In this one? Yes, in that one. Okay. And here you see we have wonderful lot of ice in it. So oh, this looks good. Yeah. Yeah. But actually we don't know. We have to go and have a check it out in the lab, right? To see what is actually in there. They take the samples to the ice laboratory where they do their tests. They need an ice laboratory because the samples are not supposed to thaw. So it's the top of permafrost, isn't it? Det kan man jo, fordi at vi, når man kigger ned i bakken og ned i kernerne, så går man jo tilbage, tilbage i tiden. Og så på den fasong, så kan man begynde at forstå, hvordan blev landskabet bygget op. Og det er den viden, du må have for at kunne sige noget om, hvordan kunne det tænke sig at reagere i fremtiden på klimatiske ændringer. By exploring the permafrost on Swalbord, which has been frozen for thousands of years, Hanne is able to contribute to a better understanding of our climate and the ways in which it's changing. Her basic work enables other scientists to gain a glimpse into the future of our atmosphere. I'm also thinking that this landscape is pretty stable and it's kind of resisting a lot of things. But I think in general, I would recognize this place very well after 100 years, but unfortunately I'm probably not going to be here by then, of course. Eight p.m. The evening begins everywhere at the same time on the 15th meridian, whether in Svalbard, Croatia, Sicily or Namibia. Thank you. 
After work, Adriana is out and about with friends on the streets of Catania. Il, il desiderio più grande è quello di poter uh, vedere il, uh, il tessuto ranch fiber uh, applicato a dei capi che sono alla portata di tutti, quindi anche utilizzarlo, cioè non utilizzarlo, anche vederlo veramente indossato alla gente che incontro per strada. She's helping both her country's orange farmers and the environment with her idea. The farmers, because the disposal of the shells is very expensive for them. The environment, because otherwise the shells would ferment and pollute the soil. Uh, io personalmente eh, spero di aver uh, contribuito nel, nel mio piccolo pensando ad un, alla nascita appunto di un tessuto dagli agrumi a migliorare eh, il, nostro, il mondo in cui viviamo ma a migliorare soprattutto il modo in cui vediamo i nostri vestiti quindi questa era la mia passione la mia passione era appunto la moda While Adriana ends her evening in Sicily with drinks and tapas, Manya's day ends with an evening of games. Ons jelle bestaan, ons is gekoppel aan die omgeving en aan die plante en aan die dieren. Um, en ons moet ons af nie sien as een superior boe die hierdie plante en dat ons in beheer is nie. Want ons is net deel van die heel al op die einde van die dag. Students from all over the world gather here at the Gobabeb Research and Training Center to work together on solutions to current problems and those we will face in the future. Chris, it's a chocolate, it's the, the, green, the green flavor. Yeah, the mint, but, 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 but yes. Um, I think many people don't care about the nature and what is going on with the nature. So, you don't have to be a forcer to be om belang te stel en meer te wil leer oor klimaatsverandering en wat besig is om te gebeur nie. Um, mense moet, mense gaan net, die le lewe gaan net oor, soos, om iets so vinnig en gauw as moeilijk te doen en soveel geld as moeilijk te maak, um, vir meeste mense. Maar dit is nie die punt van lewe nie. Yes. Stasa gets to finish up his evening in his friend's instrument shop. Along with science, he's deeply passionate about music. Courage, an innovative spirit and creativity unite these four researchers. They serve as examples of all of the people who want to combat the problems we face in our world with their ideas and their research. Ja to osobno ne vidim kao spašavanje svijeta. Dakle, moja mo motivacija je, je sasvim drugačija. E, jer morate onda u tom slučaju osjetiti nekako strah u poštovanje i pitati se zbilja je li ja sam mogu spasiti svijet? Naravno da ne mogu. I, i ova ideja koju imam, e, ja, ja znam da sama za sebe ne može riješiti ove probleme koji su oko nas, Potrebna je svačija aktivnost. Dakle, ja gledam to kao svoj osobni doprinos. Doprinos u smislu i ono što bi meni bilo drago da kao rezultat tih mojih istraživanja, i to nije malo, to radi se o 30 godina mukotrpnog rada, da vidim Dakle, ono što bi ja očekivao i s čim bi ja bio zadovoljan i sretan, da vidim da se u jednom trenutku na postajama gdje se mjeri ugljični dioksid, da koncentracije počnu padati. E, i onda bi ja mogao umrijeti sretan. Night falls on the 15th meridian. In 17 countries, the day ends at exactly the same time. Tomorrow, Stasa, Manja, Adriana and Hanne will continue their work to preserve a home for future generations. Uh, 
Um, ek het hoop vir die toekomst, ek is seker dit sal beter raak. Um, daar is baie verskillende mense met baie verskillende passies, maar ek geloof as ons anhou verduidelik hoe belangrijk die omgeving is en hoe belangrijk dit is om nie by te dra tot die besoedeling of die vernietiging van die omgeving nie, hoe meer mense sal luister. Ek denk as jy hard genoeg en lang genoeg anhou skree, gaan mense geforceer word om te luister.